We're going to start with a little piece of gathering music. Max, do you want to say a word about that? So, if you recall, we ended last year uh, with a uh, really fun, joyous celebration at the Sunday. Uh, with uh, our fun movements, we got a piece like a river, we got a joy, we got a and a little So, uh, I'd just like to invite everybody that wants to come. Same as me up here, and we can all do those little motions together. Just to get us all back into the church up here. Come on up. All right. Ready to go? One, two, three. I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. I got joy like a mountain. Oh 
God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Pilgrims on this journey, you are welcome here. You are loved. You are beloved. In the fullness of who you are, we are glad that you are here with us. In the room, or in the Zoom, or on YouTube. Folks that speak differently, vote differently, look different. Singles, couples, and families. New or long time. Sad or joyful. Doubtful or convinced. You are welcome here. People of every race, nationality, religious background, educational background, ethnicity, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, marital status, economic status, and physical and mental and emotional ability, you are welcome and beloved here. And we are glad that you are here right now so that we may journey together. Our focus this month is on the beauty of God's good creation. We are going to love like an ocean, letting love move through us and into the world in waves. We are gonna love the ocean too, and the lakes and the rivers and the ponds and every creature that lives within them like Jesus' first disciples who fished in the sea and learned to share God's love when Jesus called them out into the deep waters. We live to love. Here are some things to know for the next few weeks at Pilgrim. Um, check your bulletins for more info and make a note on the pink sheet if you'd like to get involved you can put the pink sheet in the offering plate, which will be passed today. And it is a communion Sunday, so we invite you to participate on Zoom or here in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary, we'll be coming forward with a little space between households. So if you'd like to receive communion in the pews, we'll bring it to you. Bible study and youth groups start this week. And next Sunday, we have two very special things happening. We have the blessing of the animals happening during worship, which is gonna take place on the lawn and on Zoom. Sociable animals, stuffed animals, and pictures of your pets are invited to come with you. And after that, we are going to have a picnic and it's for a very special reason. It is in honor of Bob Beckwith's 80th birthday. And we'll, yeah, mm -hmm. And that party is gonna be hosted by his family, but it is a potluck church picnic, and we are all invited. So this is gonna be a great time. If you have not yet RSVP'd, you can do that in so many different ways. You can email Pamela, you can email me, you can put a little note on the pink sheet and put it in the offering plate, which Bob is one of the people passing today. Um, <laughs> uh, or you can tell me as you leave from the sanctuary, or you can put it in the Zoom chat. So all kinds of ways to RSVP for the picnic. And tell your friends about the organ concert at two o'clock on September 25th. We have posters for the blessing of the animals and the organ concert in the back of the sanctuary. Pick them up when you're on your way to our social time hosted by the Morrisons today. Wow, we're back. It's so exciting to be here in the sanctuary today. And now we will continue with worship with our liturgist, Susan Carabio. One note about the passing of the peace. Feel free, yes, to move around, do what you feel comfortable, as well as wave, and don't forget the sanctuary. Please join me in the passing of peace. Peace be with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another.
Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Eternal One, Creator of all that is. Let us praise God. Give thanks for creation, all people. Thanks. Let us praise the name of love, for God calls us forth to love. From the mountains to the ocean, from the valleys to the rivers, the trees and the creatures, the flowers and the we praise our Creator by living to love. children up forward and bring your backpacks or laptops if you brought them. So we'll do blessing of the backpacks. Okay, so we can stand up here and um, face everybody with your backpacks. Today we have before us backpacks to be carried to and from school by the children and youth gathered here. These backpacks will contain work to be done, work that's been returned, books to be studied, tools to complete homework notebooks, pens, pencils, protractors, co compasses, crayons, rulers, scissors, glue sticks, and other items 
to be used for schoolwork will find their way in and out of these backpacks. Sometimes there will be so much stuff that will fill the backpacks that the students might find it difficult to walk. Other days, they will be light and nearly empty. But on each and every day, these backpacks represent work required of the students gathered here. And as in every aspect of our life, we bring these before God for blessing at this time. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. They stand here ready to receive your blessings and commit themselves to study and learning in the school year ahead. We ask your blessing on each of them. Further, we ask your blessing on these backpacks. They will hold the schoolwork of each student and will be carried from home to school and back again. As these students carry their backpacks, they may be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them at school each day. We pray as well for the teachers and administrators in our schools. They may also be sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care as well. We pray in the name of Jesus who we seek to follow day by day. Amen. And for those on Zoom, we bless your laptops in your backpacks too. Okay, well, we're gonna head to class now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Our first scripture reading is from Psalm 104, verses 24 through 26. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you have formed to sport in it. The second reading is from Luke 5, verses 1 through 11. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Generosity, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to burst. So they signaled their partners and the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were astounded at the catch of the fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought back their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. Here ends the reading. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be always acceptable in your sight. Bring into this moment your wisdom that we may live wisely and love like an ocean. Amen. So what was so different on Simon Peter's second fishing expedition that after an entire night without a single fish, all the nets were full and the boats practically sinking under the weight of the catch. What was the difference? Was the difference in the wind? The dawn light calling the fish up to the surface? Had the currents changed? Was the difference that they put the net on the other side of the boats, the way another version tells it? Or was it that they had gone out into deep water? There are more fish in deep water. Yes, surely some in Peter's willingness to move into deep water, that classic symbol of mystery and uncertainty made possible a surprising catch. It happened in deep water. And maybe it was also Simon Peter's humility, drawing on the trust that he had in his new teacher. Simon Peter was humble enough to think there might be something he didn't know already and willing to try again, try something new, and have hope 
in a new outcome. Yes, surely it was that willingness to do things a new way that was the difference. Can you imagine? Simon Peter could imagine. Was it that Jesus was not bound to the same human systems these fishermen were? So much of their catch was taxed or exported that even when they had a good night, their families were still hungry. One writer tells the story of that second catch this way. It's a story of extravagant, excessive, bountiful generosity food for all, food security for all, justice for all, nurture for all. In this image of plenitude, yes, Jesus shows Simon Peter what God's kingdom will look like when it is fully established. Was the difference that Jesus helped these tired and discouraged people to reconnect to the abundance and beauty of God's creation. Yes, there is the sea, great and wide, creeping things innumerable there are, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that God formed to sport in it? Or was the difference that Jesus was in the boat with them? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's it. I think surely, most certainly, it was that Jesus was in the boat with them. It happened when they knew they were not alone. That's the crucial difference, I think. Jesus was in the boat with them. Jesus invited them to set out into the deep water and went with them. Simon Peter and James and John were not on their own, not then and not when they followed Jesus through Galilee. Thanks be to God, we are not alone either. That's the good news for us. We are, we are called into deep waters, called to love and serve and hope, called to believe that the next catch might be better. We are called to put out into deep waters and to try again and again and again. And we can do it because we are not alone in the boat. We can do it because Jesus says, don't be afraid. We live in a world of need. You could reasonably feel like Simon Peter and James and John at the end of a night of frustration. Your nets empty and your hearts filled with worry and frustration for your family, for yourself, for your community, for the world. We know folks who are tired. We know folks who are grieving. We know folks who are sick or in crisis. And the world as a whole, from violence to illness, life is hard for us, for our neighbors next door and across the ocean. As we ponder a season of creation, there are days when we feel the weight of climate change and the clock ticking. And yet, one thing I know, when Jesus is in the boat with us, there is always a new day, a new dawn, nets that can be filled, love like an ocean, love moving through us and into the world in waves. In this month focused on creation, not Pilgrim's first such season and certainly not our last, we acknowledge that we are called, called like these fishermen that dawn, but called today to be healers of the earth for the sake of our neighbors near and far. 
We humbly admit to where we have failed to protect the earth and God's creatures, but in this particular season, I'm moved by Bill McKibben's words from his book on Job. The challenge before us, he says, is to figure out how to link two callings, the two imperatives from the voice in the wilderness, the call to humility and the call to joy. Each one on its own is insufficient. So we are called not just to confess, to repent, to change and to serve, but also called to joy, called to revel in beauty, called to connect with the sacred earth. For it is with joy and humility together that we can be healers of the earth. And in all of it, with God's love and within our community of faith, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing our next hymn, Touch the Earth Lightly, number 569 in the Black Hymnals. invite us to lift up our prayers, our joys, and our concerns on this day. If there is something that is on your heart, folks on Zoom, I'm inviting you to put that in the chat right now, and I will collect that in just a moment. If there are folks here in the sanctuary that you, if you would like to lift something up, let's start with our joys as we get back into the sanctuary this fall. Who has a joy to share? Joe. Seeing my granddaughter laugh. Oh, seeing your granddaughter Harper laugh. All right, that is indeed a joy. Thank you for lifting up Harper. Are there others? I, I think there's one that's like, on my mind right now, which is that that choir was fantastic this morning. Thanks be to God. Glad to see you back. Other joys to share today. 
I'm going to head to the Zoom to see if there are ones in our chat. And I will come back in just a moment. What weighs on us this day, Duncan? I like to remember September 11th, the day that changed America. I like to go to Mother of Hera, or all of us who were lost, including the family and friends, their loved ones. But I offer that same prayer. Thank you, Duncan. I'm going to try to repeat that word for word. I want to make sure, um, particularly, that those on Zoom were able to hear it. Um, a prayer on this 21st anniversary of September 11th, a day that changed our country and our world, really. A prayer remembering those who were lost and all of the families devastated that day. And also a prayer for those who were persecuted after September 11th for no fault of their own, being put into a, a category with terrorists simply because of the color of their skin. I'm, I'm adding words there, but we remember all of that on this anniversary day. Thank you. Are there other prayers that you would lift up? Marjorie. Yes. A prayer for the people of the United Kingdom and Great Britain uh, in the loss of Queen Elizabeth, and a prayer for um, the new king of that country, King Charles III. Thank you. We lift up prayers for Isabel. Deborah's granddaughter continuing with chemo treatments and starting kindergarten. So um, a, a very full time. Zoom folks, I'm going to come over and see you now. Mary lifts up a prayer of thanksgiving for the bird song and the cooler weather and friends. In the season of creation, I want to lift up thanksgiving for things that are giving us hope in this moment, because there is hope in our world, even around climate change. And there were very important steps taken this summer that may help us avert some of the worst parts of climate change. So I lift up um, a prayer of thanksgiving and also a prayer of hope for all of our leaders, determined, a prayer for their determination and their resolution to work on climate change. I think I've told you all before that one of my friends uh, in his church, every Sunday for a long, long time, he was the first person with his hand up and his prayer was the same every week for swift and sensible action on global climate change. And so also is my prayer. Let us bring all of our prayers to God and we'll begin with a moment of silence. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, we pray this day in faith for the renewal of all things, drawing hope and courage and strength from your love. We pray in this season of creation for swift and sensible action on global climate change. As we pray for all those already deeply impacted, for the people of Pakistan and every flooded place, for the people of Jackson and every community without safe drinking water, for the Western US inundated by wildfire. And yet we claim hope in this moment, O oh God, new laws and agreements that may stem the worst. We pray to be resolute and resilient. We pray this day with those who are grieving, loved ones whose names have made the headlines and less well-known losses. Be with all who mourn, that they might be comforted. Be with a nation that is missing their queen. And we pray for all leaders around the world with a special prayer this weekend for King Charles III. We are here, O oh God, with our feet on the ground, with you walking beside us as we try to walk without fainting, walk through shadows of death and ill health and addiction. We need your strength not to grow weary as we continue to hope for new life. We pray for everyone who is in need of healing and strength, and particularly for the young ones among us dealing with illness or injury. For Isabel, for M and his hamstring. And oh God, on this day, September 11th, a day we cannot forget. We remember all the lives lost 21 years ago today. We cry out to you once more, O oh God, give us the courage to be peacemakers, to carry on in love, to have hearts uncorrupted by hatred. Speak to those who will be lured by power and madness. Show them that earthly power is never the final victor. Turn all our hearts so that we may see that love is stronger than death, that goodness is stronger than evil. We pray for a season of equality and equity we pray for everyone who has been discriminated against based on their ethnicity or background. And we pray, O oh God, for all of us that the world might be a safe and loving home for us all. Wise, loving God, you have set this earth on its foundation and brought forth living water to quench thirst. And we sing to you, O oh God, as long as we live, we will rejoice in you, and we pray that our meditations might be pleasing to you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we're going to receive the morning offering and we're going to return to the way that we did it a couple of years ago, which is by bringing the plates to you. 
Yet we have also innovated. So there's a QR code in the bulletin and you can go to our website. We are so deeply grateful for all of the ways that this congregation supports the ministries of this church and we invite you to consider your gift now. Thank you. Generous God, we offer these gifts in gratitude for all the blessings of our lives and in support of the ministries of this year church. May our gifts of time, talent, and treasure bring blessings to those in need. Amen. Now we're going to sing our communion hymn, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ, and uh, our kids are going to be bringing in the communion elements as we begin the communion service.
Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, that's the word of man loves about. Jesus lives again, earth Dan, would you join me right here? And I have your part printed out. I have it right here. Okay. Now, we just have to make sure that this doesn't... There we go. Perfect. Okay. Dan is offering our invitation to communion today. And just speak right into the microphone, okay? Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall not thirst. All are welcome at this table. Come not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are worthy, but because you are forgiven. In company with all who hunger for spiritual food, let us come to this table to know the rising Christ and sharing of this life-giving bread. Friends, we come to this table humble and joyful. And part of being humble is bringing our confessions to God, who is all loving and all merciful. So let us pray together as it is found in your bulletin. Loving God, forgive us when we sin against our siblings, against your creation, against you. Grant us the grace and humility to change for the sake of building up your kingdom of love and justice. Amen. And we continue with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the good news that leads to new life. God has loved you, loves you now, and will love you always. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O Holy One, breath of our life, originator of grace, source of limitless love, we thank you for our brother Jesus, who showed us how to love our neighbors by feeding 5,000, by speaking healing to the Syrophoenician woman's daughter, and by feeding 4,000 travelers with a miracle of generosity. We thank you for our teacher Jesus, who reminded us that the greatest law is to love your neighbor as yourself. And we remember Jesus on this day. We remember that Jesus showed this love of neighbor even on the eve of his death, when he gathered at a table with his friends, friends who often misunderstood him, one who had betrayed him, and others who would later deny him, but all who loved him. He took the bread that night and blessed and broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take 
and eat, for this is my body broken for you. And after supper, as Jesus practiced with us what God's joyful table will be, he took the cup and gave thanks to God and said, take this, all of you, and drink. This cup is a new promise that all may have life and have it abundantly. I will be with you any time that you share this meal with your neighbors. Do this to remember me. Breathe life in us, Holy Spirit of God. Let these everyday gifts of bread and cup become for us a life-sustaining meal. As we share this meal, bring us together and make us one loving community of neighbors. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, friends, we're going to come forward for communion for those who feel comfortable doing so. If you do not and you would like to be served in the pews, we will look for you after folks do come forward. So please make a wave to us to make sure that we come to find you. We have bread on the two silver plates. We have gluten-free rice crackers on the ceramic plate, which will be on this side. We're going to invite you to come forward, leaving room between households. And there's hand sanitizer to use as you approach. So that's how we're going to do communion today. Everyone, every single one is welcome at this table. Stephanie and Bruce and David have prepared plenty for this feast for us all to be able to be served. Folks on Zoom, you are part of this meal too. We invite you to be part of this meal with what you have at your table at home. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready.
Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for refreshing us at your table. We thank you for our kin in this community and around the world. May we always be reminded to see the world through Christ's eyes and to work for a time when all may share together at your table. Amen. And now we're going to sing our closing hymn which is Take My Gifts in the Black Hymnal number 562. We're almost ready to continue the feast outside on the lawn, but before that, hear this benediction and our postlude. Go forth to love like an ocean, buoyed up by God's strength, awed by God's creation, and moved to serve God's people. Amen.